Namaste yogis. Welcome to your quote unquote practice because today we are doing pre and post pickleball yoga. Well, we call it yoga, but it is, um, it's going to be designed today for you to do, you know, at the court when you're there before and after. You can do it as a practice before you do any activity like walking, running, biking. So it just gives you a chance to find your connection awareness to the body, but also we're going to be focusing on the things that we kind of overuse in pickleball. So um, let's get to the court. All right, yogis, first thing we're thinking about when we're thinking about um, pickleball, or at least I am, I'm always thinking about the hands and the wrists because we are doing a little a little bit of movement with those paddles. So we're going to start with um, just big uh, circles with the hands. We're going to do clockwise and counterclockwise. And again, you can do this right before practice, and it's going to be um, quite quick, so it's not going to be like you're going to do a, an hour practice before each, each game. But um, So we're going to take the right hand, we're going to grab the tips, of the left fingers, and we're gonna press the palms forward. You can even twist a little bit towards the pinky, and that's gonna give you a little bit of your um, fingers as well as the wrists. And then we're just gonna give that uh, hand a little massage, the palm, the fingers, and you can kind of, even if you have a, you can crack them, you can crack the fingers. We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do the other side, so left hand grabs the tips, with the right fingers, again, you're gonna straighten that over, you're gonna press, and then you can maybe even twist a little bit towards pinky. And you can have each one of your fingers hold one of those other fingers. So when you pull, you may be able to, like for me, I feel the index finger the most, so you can kind of regulate there. And then let that go, and then grab the wrist, and pull, press, little uh, massage of the thumb and the hands, and then a little crack, and then we're gonna shake, shake, shake. We're just going to work up the arm. So from there, it's going to be the elbows. So let's take that right arm in front, and we're going to take the left arm underneath. We're going to squeeze that bicep towards the ear, and then from here, you're going to bend and straighten that right elbow. And you're looking over the right shoulder, and you can lift that right arm up and down. This is not only for the elbow, but it's the shoulder and the shoulder blade, which we're using a lot. And then let that go, and then just give them a shake. And then we're gonna do the other side, so left arm in front, right arm underneath, squeeze, bend and straighten that elbow a few times, maybe internal, external rotation. Draw the left shoulder down, draw the left ear towards the left shoulder. You can even go the right shoulder up and down. And then let that go, shake that arm out, and just interlace your fingers behind your back, squeeze your shoulder blades, straighten the elbows. Move the head. And again, this kind of a practice is a nice way to find connection and awareness to the body when you're doing any work at all, like running, swimming, biking. All right, release that, shake it out. Right arm underneath left arm. Either grab the shoulders if you have the flexibility. The right hand can grab the left wrist. In, in yoga, this is called the eagle arms. We're creating space between the shoulder blades. So we've got a couple things here. We're going to lift the elbows up. And we'll draw the shoulders down and the hands a little bit away from the face. Now we want some movement. So like a pendulum, the elbows are going to stay in the same spot. We're just going to let those arms drift to the left. And the arms drift a little to the right. All the while paying attention to the neck. And then unwind. And then once again, we're going to shake those out. Let's do the other side. Left arm underneath or on top. Left hand grabs right wrist or palm. The thumbs are facing the face. So both pinkies are facing forward. Elbows are up, shoulders are down. If you have the hands, they can come a little bit away from the face. Drop those arms a little to the left, a little bit to the right. Not all depends on how much time you have before your uh, game um, or the match. You could do these a little bit longer as well. If you find a spot that needs attention, then go right ahead, unwind those. Give them a little shake. 
And then we're going to do a little tap. So we're going to take the right hand to the top of that right shoulder, careful of the mic, we're just going to tap it. We're going to go down the arm, and then we're going to massage the, the joint of the elbow, so above the elbow, as well as in the inside of the crease of the elbow and down. And we're going to give that forearm a tap, and we're going to massage the wrist again. And then the other side, left hand to the front of the shoulder chest, tap, tap, tap around the outside, and then massage the bicep. Little tap, massage the um, the elbow joint. And we're just getting blood to it. Tap, tap, tap all the way down. And then we'll take both hands to the rib cage, to the belly, to the side body, to the back, to the hips. And then we're gonna twist. Let those arms dangle like wet spaghetti noodles. And they're just giving the hips a little smack up towards the side body. You can twist quite quickly, you know, like you're get, you can maybe feel the blood rush down to your fingers. So a nice twist here, and again, this wakes up the body, especially for us, you know, like when you're doing these games, right, they, they're, they're called um, fast twitch muscles, which makes you move real quick, so we wanna make sure we're nice and warm. All right, so arms, shoulders are taken care of, and we're just gonna do a gentle forward fold, so feet about a little bit wider than hips distance, and then we're gonna bend the knees, and we're gonna drop the arms. And then from here, bend your knees enough to get your hands to the floor. And then you're gonna straighten one knee and think about trying to lift the right hip. That bend, that left knee can bend. And I just want you to kind of bend and straighten the right knee a few times. And then we're gonna switch. So bend that right knee and start to lift the left hip as you bend and straighten the left knee. And then bend both knees, let the head dangle, give it a little shake, and then you try to straighten both knees. And they don't have to be straight, but you're, you're trying to feel the sensation in the back of the legs as you straighten them. While you're here, heel toe your feet a little bit closer together to so make it a little bit more intense. Do that again, bend and straighten the knees a few times. And then take a nice big inhale, come up halfway. And then exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands, step your left foot back. Drop your left knee, point your left toes. Now, if you're doing this at the court, you may not be on the mat, so you may want to take a sock or something soft, to um, um, a towel underneath uh, the left knee. And then we're just gonna to start to open up a little bit through that hip flexor. So you're just gonna draw the hips forward. Think about tucking your tailbone to uh, wake up that hip flexor. And then alternate, vacillate, by pressing the left foot into the ground and then softening the left foot. And while you do that, you can move the hips forward and back. We're just opening up the quadricep, the hip flexor, and you're probably gonna be running around a bunch. And then we're gonna add a little twist, right hand to right hip, left hand to, to right knee. Give yourself a moment. You can even lean back a little bit for a back bend. And again, you can press down that left foot and give yourself another breath. So we're getting the quadricep in front of the, that, that left leg. And then we're gonna come back to center both hands around that right foot. Draw that, uh, the hips back, roll into the right heel. And I do want you to flex your foot so you can feel it in the calf. So for a lot of people that are doing it, the, they're running a lot on the toes and the calf gets it. And if you're not being really mindful of the calf, you could overdo it. So I want you to flex the calf so when you lean forward, you feel it in the calf in the back of the knee. Now, if you feel it in the hamstring, see if you can just bend the knee a little bit, flex the foot more, and lean forward. And then you can kind of vacillate here by bending and straightening the knee, something very similar that we did in our, um, our forward fold. So give yourself a few breaths here. And again, if you have more time, and if you know you're tightening the hamstrings and the calves, spend a little bit more time here. When you're ready, you can bend your knee, plant your foot, and come into downward dog, or you can just switch. And then you step that left foot forward, drop the right knee. Make sure you support that right kneecap again, especially if you're doing it on concrete. You wanna make sure that that's off. You can also roll over the right toes. It gives you a little bit different sensation, but you have that option. Square the hips uh, forward and back, tuck the tailbone, pause in the sensation, press the top of the right foot in the ground and then soften. So keep in mind, when we press the foot down, we are um, activating or strengthening the hip flexor. When we soften the foot, we're stretching, and we probably need both, right? Whatever one is harder, that's the, probably one that needs it the most, unfortunately, right? 
All right, so stay there. Again, you're tucking the tailbone to really wake up that quadricep and the hip flexor. Left hand to left hip, right hand to left knee, twist. Again, a little back bend so you can kind of wake up a little bit of that lower back. Draw the belly in. And then unwind both hands around that left foot. Draw the hips back. And again, flex the left foot. Start to feel the calf in the back of the knee. And then you can play a little bit by bending and straightening the left knee. You're searching for the sensation that may feel tight or a sensation that's intense. And you just want to stay there for a little bit. And again, we're not trying to fix anything. We are just making sure that the areas that we're going to be using are awake. Blood flow, that there is sensation in the calf, the hamstring, the back of the knee. One more deep full breath here. And then draw that left, uh, bring, sorry, draw that hip forward, move that left foot to the right, and then we're gonna do a pigeon pose. So again, if you don't have much time, I just want you to be here for a moment. So for alignment, left heel somewhere around your right hip bone. The left knee is a little on the outside of the left shoulder. You can roll over your right toes. Again, if you're not on a mat or a soft surface, you may wanna slide something underneath your back knee. And you can stay here for a moment and just rock a little bit. In fact, if you press your hands down and squeeze the shoulder blades together, you'll start to get that hip flexor again and you'll start to waken up the lower back. But if you really want to focus on the left glute, again, which we really use when we're running around, you can lower all the way down. And again, you can stay here for as long as you like. So if you do have a a half hour before you go, which is always a great idea to warm up a half hour before you go. But if you have longer, you can stay here as long as you like. And the hip openers are something that is extremely important. And then we're going to do the other side so the hands plant down. However you want to get there, I prefer a downward facing dog so I can get my um, Achilles tendon and my calves awake. And then bring your right shin forward. Same thing. If you're feeling it in your knee, your front knee, you may want to slide something underneath your right hip like a towel to support the knee or draw that right foot back or even drop to the right hip and then come forward. Again, you have that option of squeezing the shoulder blades together and you can start to feel it in that lower back and as the hips drop, you're going to feel it in the top of that left hip flexor. Movement left or right, kind of find out where you're at. Another breath. And then let's go into downward facing dog. You can do this without a mat. You can even do it with shoes on. And I just want you to invite your heels, not just down, but towards away from you. So if you're on a mat, it would be towards the back of the mat. So you can feel it in the calves. And in here, you can bend right knee and bend left knee. You can sway the hips from side to side, even shake your head. And then give yourself another breath. This is nice because you're getting an inversion. So you're getting some blood to the brain. And then drop your knees down and then cross your ankles and then just bring the soles of the feet together. And we're going to also take care of the ankles. So I want you to take your thumbs in uh, the arches. You're going to roll your feet out. This will give you some flexibility in the ankles as well as some flexibility in the tops of the feet. And if you don't have your shoes on, you can kind of massage with the feet. But if you have your shoes on, you can just kind of roll them in and out and then scooch your heels towards your hips. Draw your knees down and then you can even move forward and back, right? You can do that several times, or you can do static and go forward, stay, and maybe press the knees, inner thighs, or shins down. If you have a still a little bit more time, scoot your feet a little bit farther forward, come forward again. This will get a little bit of your lower back. Inhale, come on up. And then a little bit farther forward, come forward again. Little rock from side to side. Now this is our, our, one of our last poses here. So start to breathe deeply. So inhale, fill up the lungs, exhale, empty the lungs. Do that again. Empty. Inhale, come on up. Take the hands to the outsides of the knees. Feet down, hands behind you. Drop your knees to the left, lift your heart and twist to the right, 
a couple deep breaths. We are starting to prime our lungs now because if you're winded in while you're playing the match, you're, uh, you're going to actually be able to start the match a little bit more um, on top of your game because now you don't have to wait for the lungs to um, acclimate. So keep breathing very deeply. You can do this through your whole practice too. Knees up, drop the knees to the right, twist to the left, breathe deeply. When I say deeply, I'm thinking about over-exaggerating the inhalation, filling the lungs, and then over-exaggerating your exhalation as you empty the lungs. You'll be able to start really quickly. All right, inhale, come back to center, separate your feet as wide as your hips, and we're gonna come into yogi squat. Malasana here, hands to heart center. This is where you start to focus your mind. Envision you um, smacking that ball around. Keeping your composure, breathing deeply, feeling the body. Another moment, and you staying in this yogi um, squat here with your eyes closed and hands together, it can be quite intimidating for the other team. They're like, whoa, who are we dealing with? And you're like, oh yeah, Buddha on the court. <laughs> All right, yogis, good luck in your practice. Good luck in your game. Good luck in your match. Take care of yourself. You can do the same practice when you are uh, done with uh, your game as well. Take it easy. Peace.